Welcome back to CTN. I'm your host, Robert Van Slitten. Let's go directly to the desktop. Okay, we're back in Xcode in the slider project. And in this episode, we're going to take a more detailed look at the code I added. However, I want to discuss a few things about Xcode first. To begin with, you can have multiple workspace windows open, so you can be working on multiple projects at the same time. There's two other windows of interest, and the most significant one at this point is that there's a documentation window, which gives you access to a very extensive amount of documentation. What's shown right now is the NS string class, which we used in the code that we're going to discuss. The second window is called the organizer and this window allows you to manage your devices some aspects of your projects and change management now let's go over to the storyboard I want to discuss a little bit of history here in previous versions of Xcode prior to 4. 5 or whatever, there was a separate tool referred to as Interface Builder, which was the, the graphic design tool. It was then integrated into Xcode directly. It used to be you had to jump between two different tools. So Interface Builder, commonly referred to as IB, is part of the workspace window. What this thing actually is, is not a code generator. In other words, it doesn't generate a bunch of code that ends up then creating the GUI. What actually happens is objects are effectively archived, freeze-dried, so to speak, into something referred to as a nib file, NIB. And when the applications run and the view is loaded in, they're effectively unfrozen out of the nib file. Let's take a look at the code. I'm going to bring up the assistant editor now. And we'll talk about some of the syntax that um, results from this. Okay. When we did our outlet, when we control dragged from the label into the viewcontroller.m file, we ended up with a property. This property had a weak relationship. And that's because the label is actually owned for a strong relationship by its background view. And these views may get unloaded under certain circumstances because this is a low memory device, if it's not currently being displayed, it always is in this app, but if you had a case where they unload, you don't want a strong relationship with the view controller. Now you may ask, well, what if it comes back into view? Well, the controller is told that it returns. It's not atomic. Now, there's this declaration here, IB outlet, and that's actually defined by a pound defined as nothing. It's information that's given to the system about the outlet for the purposes of Interface Builder. Of course, the top type is UI, la uh, UI label, and we give it a name. Now let's go on and take a look at the action. It's a minus sign, so it's an instance method. Its type is IB action. Now, actually, those are defined as voids from the, comp the compiler's standpoint, so it actually returns nothing. But it's the same situation where there's this tag IB action, which is information to the system for constructing the nib file. The name is slider change, and we have the colon. The type 
is a UI slider and we just simply call that sender. Now if you go down to this piece of code here we have dot notation. We have self which is this object, it's the, the view controller instance. It has a property display value. You remember that was actually defined up here. And display value, being a UI label, has a value, or has, I'm sorry, has text. That's what the dot text is. So in other words, you're writing into this property, the property of UI label called text, and UI label is a property of self. Now down here, you have a class called NSString. And this is a foundation class, and I know we haven't talked about the foundation library at all. This is a class, so this is a class method. And it's called string with format. Now, what you'll notice here, as I mentioned, one of the parameters is this at sign quote present D which is a format. Now there's a comma in here. This special notation for methods that take a variable number of arguments and they're comma separated. So this is one of those special cases. And the argument is the value of sender. In other words, the sender is the slider and one of its properties is something referred to as value. Now if you actually go to the documentation window and you type in UI label, or I'm sorry, UI slider in the search bar, you'll find that it has a property called value. I'm simply going to cast that to an integer because I want an integer value ranging from 0 to 100. That's how this thing works. We're going to stop here. We're going to try to keep these episodes short, easier on me, and easier for you to digest, I hope. You may also note that I did change the color arrangement on slider. I like the black background better, and this is the one that's actually on the website. In the next episode, we're going to start talking about the frameworks. UI kit and foundation. Thanks for watching.